What is going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of the Sports Muse Podcast. I am your host, Kevin Brumley, and I am joined by my co-host today, John. John, how you doing? Doing good, man. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, looking a little dark on your end, storming a little bit, storm. so ho- hopefully the power doesn't go out. <laughs> That's what happened yesterday when it was storming. The power just cut out, and I was like, should I call him back? Nah, fuck it. <laughs> so... Um, We're breaking down the NFC East. Uh, We've already broken down the Philadelphia Eagles, and we are going to the Dallas Cowboys. So we look at the 2019 record. The Cowboys finished 8-8, and and we look at some of their re-signings and additions. Um, So we have Anthony Brown, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Amari Cooper, which was, you know, a big one they had to give him back. You know, the Red Rock and Andy Dalton, Cam Irving, Blake Jarwin, Sean Lee, Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe, Aldon Smith, and then they tagged Dak Prescott. So all in all, what do you think about their re-signings and uh, acquisitions who they brought in? Yeah, I, I mean, not even counting the draft. I think the Cowboys have one of the better uh, preseasons. I just – I like all their activity. Like, yeah, they had to re-sign Amari and everything. But, I mean, we were just talking about Don's probably one of the better backup QBs in the league right now. I mean, solid veteran. Uh, Blake Jarwin hopefully has a big year. I mean, their defense is just getting better and better. Gerald McCoy, Donatari Poe, like, it's just – I, th- I think, like, they're even more stacked now. So, Alden Smith, like, I don't know. I just like all their additions a lot. Yeah, you look at both of their backup, like, you know, edge rushers. Yeah. Um, if they can a- ever stay on the field with Randy Gregory and Alden Smith, they quit doing dumb stuff. Um, yeah. That makes that team even more stacked. Um, you know, I-, I like it as far as I thought they re-signed the guys they, they had to, and uh, mm-hmm. they got a little bit of talent. So, no, I like it. And we go into departures. Um, we see Tavon Austin, Randall Cobb, Jason Witten, Cam Fleming, Travis Frederick retired, uh, Michael Bennett retired, Robert Quinn, Malik Collins, Byron Jones, Jeff Heath. Now, when I look at those departures, I mean, I think definitely by far the biggest one's Byron Jones. Um, you know, he's one, one of the best in the league um, back in that secondary. So that, that's a big loss. But, you know, like I said, when you sign Amari to that big contract, you know Dak's going to you have to pay him a big contract. That O-line, you have a lot of money invested. You know, somebody has to be the, the odd man out. Um, unfortunately for Cowboy fans, that's, that's Byron Jones. Um, but I think they have some guys who can not fill those shoes, but, you know, they, they have a, a litany of guys who can help at least. Um, what about you? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why they drafted, what, two uh, cornerbacks in the first three rounds, like trying to fill that hole. But, yeah, I mean, Byron Jones needed that big money. He's one of the top cornerbacks. So, you, I mean, you got to – so, I think it was smart to let him go. I mean, just – Hopefully, you find someone else that can fill that. But Randall Cobb had a pretty solid year last year. I mean, finally, they got rid of Tavon on Austin. Like, I don't know. Will he, do you think he'll sign anywhere? I mean, he's never like, really done anything in the league. He's been a gadget player, but he's not even great at that. You know, yeah, so. Pretty, like, a couple decent plays. But, yeah, so I, I don't – I mean, their departure is definitely – it's not too – it's not anything they can't cover up. Yeah, I mean, I like it all in all. You know, Travis Frederick's another big one. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been he's been a, a great player for them for a while now. And we get into their 2020 draft. Uh, man, he just fell. And I, I think if you're Dallas, like, you had to take him. Uh, C.D. Lamb, you know, a lot of people had, had him as the best receiver in the draft. And, uh, you know, he just fell to them, fell right in their laps. Now they have that killer trio with uh, C.D., Gallup, and Amari. So, you know, look out in that secondary. Um, they got Trayvon Diggs and Gallimore, um, who's you know, a great defensive tackle. So that, that front, uh, that front four is getting even stronger. So at, as far as their draft goes, you know, I, I think it was pretty solid. Um, and they got really lucky with CD falling right to them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think like, even if you don't need the receiver right now, because I'm already in Michael Gallup, how do you not take him if you're staying true to your draft and just trying to take the best available? I mean, yeah, I think majority of boards had him in the top 10. So yeah, that's, I got to be a steal of the first round. I mean, I think I so. Mean, hey, it's much. It's much like what you know Baltimore did. You know, I'm sure they didn't. They didn't need J.K. Dobbins at all. But when he falls yeah. to you at the end of the second round, you're just like, I got to take him. You know, so they didn't really need a receiver per se that early. But I mean, that's a great one to get, man. That is a know, great one that, to get. That Gallimore, like forty, what he have a four seven nine forty. When those big dudes can just move, like that's so scary. Because you know yeah. they're just going to be a force. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely – and that brings me to, like, my thoughts on the roster is, on paper, man, this roster is solid. 
Um, the only possible weakness, and I don't even think it's that much of a weakness, is like they don't – with losing Byron Jones, they don't have the standout corner anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they, you know, with a, a Wouzier and whatnot, um, I think they have some guys who can play at corner. Um, but, like, they might have trouble with – your Julio Jones of the world, but guess what, man, if you're any corner, no matter how good you are, you're going to have trouble with like a, a Julio or, or something mm -hmm. like that. So in that, in that division, um, they should match up well. And like I said, man, their roster is pretty stacked both sides of the ball. What, what are you thinking? Yeah. I mean, you know, losing Byron Jones out of hurt, which who, who would you rather have? I mean, cause if say they didn't sign Zeke to such a big contract and you know, I mean, would you rather have Zeke or Byron Jones? Like I think I'd rather still have Zeke because, I mean, I think they're going to have to eventually pay Dak. So, that's – I mean, that's why I, the way I was kind of thinking of it. I would rather have Zeke than Byron Jones um, based on their roster. And then I saw, like, Randy Gregory might come back and Dallas would, like, bring him back if he was, like, instituted back by the NFL. So, I mean, their defense might even get even better. So, yeah, I mean, their, their roster is just solid. No, I, I completely agree. And that, that brings me to, you know, how do they stack up the NFC East and – you know, I think the Giants actually did a really good job of getting better, but I think it just falls down to a two-dog race. Um, you know, we have the Eagles versus the Cowboys, and, you know, I think on paper Dallas is a little bit better. Um, and we know Philly always gets beat up. You know, they, they had the worst injury luck. You know, the another kind of big question for me is Mike McCarthy's a, a veteran coach, but without the time to really kind of mesh with your team, how, how does that look? You know, we don't know. Um, it's not like he's a rookie coach, rookie head coach. Um, the dude's been doing it for a while. Yeah, so it's just, it's just interesting. But I think, you know, I've, I've heard this. I heard this on The Ringer. Is It was a really good point is, you know, Mike McCarthy does a lot of offensive stuff, but they're keeping Kellen Moore. So there shouldn't be that much friction as far as a new head coach goes, which is really nice for a Dallas fan. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was smart by them. I mean, I mean obviously, Jason Garrett saw something in Kellen Moore because he got that job so quick. But, yeah, so I think that was smart by him to try to keep him around. Maybe Dak really likes him or something. So, hopefully, that could almost keep Dak there without him signing the big deal. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that would be, like, the only weakness I would say is Mark, Mike McCarthy. Is, how much of an upgrade do you think he is from Jason Garrett? Um, you know, I'm not the biggest Mike McCarthy fan, but Jason Garrett is pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean I think taking that team last year at 8-8, eight and eight, like, I don't know. I put that a lot on the coaching. They made some terrible decisions last year. Yeah, it, it has to. And there's a reason Cousin Sal calls on the clapper. And uh, actually, it was, what, Lombardi who started the clapper. I think so. Um, but, no, it, it's the whole idea of – I don't know if Mike McCarthy's necessarily, you know, a great coach, but I think Ga Jason Garrett's a bad coach, that, I would say. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that gets me two predictions. What do you think the Cowboys finish in 2020 if there is a season? Uh, I had them taking the – division at 11 and 5 I mean just right above the Eagles I mean I like the Eagles a lot but I could just see Dallas just I could just see them winning this year I mean they should have won it last year other than I, I don't know that 8-8 eight eight has to be disappointment disappointing last year so I, I have them winning at 11 and 5. So I also have them taking the division I have them taking it at 10 and 6 okay. um, you know it's going to be a uh, close but this Dallas team really does have the roster to you know, finish a, a 12 and four, a 13 and three. They're, they're that good on paper. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you never know what to expect. You know, that NFC East, even with like the Giants being lesser, um, it's still close games and just a lot of weird stuff happens in the NFL. Yeah, um, I mean, it, Dallas was 0 and 5 in one score games last year. I mean, and yeah. one, of, one of those was a loss to the Jets. So, I mean, they, they lost to the Bears and the Jets by one score. Like, I don't know, you can't be losing those games if you're going to be one of the favorites for the Super Bowl. Exactly. So, you know, like I said, I have 10 and six. I wouldn't be surprised to be for them to be a lot better than that. Um, but that's kind of just a, a gut feeling of just kind of maybe a, a little, little tough at the beginning. All right. So parting shots. Do you have any parting shots about the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, I, yeah. I don't know how much of like a hot take it is. Cause I'm sure he's one of the favorites. I, I think Zeke's going to win the wrestling title this year. Um, I mean, McCaffrey might have just, like, more all purpose yards just with him being such a good receiving back. But I think Zeke takes the rushing title this year. I mean, I don't know. I, I could just see them really, like, leaning on him this year and just grinding out. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he has over 300 carries. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely could be. Um, you know, I know he had a little spat with the Cowboys this past week, uh, you know, so we'll kind of see how that plays out. So my parting shot is not like, will he, but should Dak Prescott make north of $35 million a year? What do you think? I mean, that's why if I was him, I'd have signed the deal. I mean, he's really betting on himself, and I think that's tough. We, I mean, we've seen it work, but I don't know. I think he's better than Kirk Cousins, so I think he at least needs to get that money. Um, I mean, I definitely think he – no, I don't think he's like the upper tier, but maybe like at least the tier two quarterback range. I mean, he could easily play himself into that range. So, I mean, I think he, I think he deserves it, especially if he plays well this year. I mean, maybe he underperformed a little bit last year, but I don't know. What do you think? So, let's look at it this way. Um, a lot of the NFL falls down to, and we look at the Kirk Cousin things, it falls down to who needs who more. And mm -hmm. I think right now Dak has all the power. The Cowboys need Dak more than Dak needs the Cowboys. And if Dak hits the open market, that's how Kirk Cousins got stupid money. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, do I think he'll make 35 or north of it? Probably. Now, do I think that he deserves to be the second highest paid quarterback in football? No. Um, so it's an interesting thing. So let's play a little bit of a name game of who's better. So it's Dak Prescott versus Matt Ryan. What do you think? I'm probably taking Dak. Carson Wentz. If, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Carson Wentz. I like, I like Wentz. I love Wentz though. Baker Mayfield. Dak. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun. Kyler Murray. I think Kyler. I think he's higher upside. Matt Stafford. And just because of the age difference, Dak, but I mean, Stafford can sling it. So, no, that's just a little bit of an interesting kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I do like Dak Prescott. I agree with you. He's in that second or third tier, but I don't think, like, with the quarterback division – or quarterback division, the quarterback competition being so stacked, um, I definitely – I think he's a great quarterback. Just 35 mil making that Russell Wilson money is kind of hard to envision. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But I just – I mean, well, the only thing that would go against him is, like, say with this – uh COVID-19 if the cap goes down because everyone's talking the cap could go down next year I mean I guess unless they tag him again because they could tag him again right mm -hmm. yeah I mean I mean that's basically what the Red or Washington did to uh Kirk Cousins so I don't know I wouldn't want to tag would you want to tag him again or would you try to sign him next year so I think from a business standpoint you try to get the contract done before you have to tag him because as soon as you tag him that second time you pretty much lose all leverage and mm -hmm. you're probably going to lose that player's faith in the team to yeah. make a long-term deal right I, I mean i agree i i and, but like my other thing would be like would washington be better if they would have like not tagged cousins so many times i think i'd rather have him, him or Dwayne haskins i don't know like say they did sign kirk cousins kirk cousins to a longer deal i don't know but I mean, I think they need to sign him, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Sign him to like a longer term contract, like something like the, not as rich as Patrick Mahomes, but something like that ten year deal, or like because I know they were they were trying to get a five and Dak wanted a four, right? Yeah. So and it's the whole idea of, you know, Dak wants to get as many contracts in as yeah. as he can, which makes exactly. sense. The Cowboys go, we want to get as least uh, the least amount of contracts in. So mm -hmm. it, it's this always debate uh, Dallas usually tries to sign their guys longer if they can so it's gonna be interesting um but that pretty much wraps us up for the Dallas Cowboys uh make sure if you guys like the episode click like click subscribe and you know check out all of our NFL previews and we will see you guys next time